All right, y'all, I just want to give you a little rundown uh, on what our stage three is and kind of what sets some of our engines apart. Um, so all of our stage three blocks, um, they are seasoned cases, cases, or in other words, a used case. Um, we usually use the RA case. They're usually the BBBB blocks. Um, we do that just because they traditionally are a lot nicer. Um, they're usually a little lower mileage. Um, so you can see how kind of not great this block looks. Um, this is before we do our block detail. Um, but the way this process starts out is we, we vet a block, we get a good use case. It's either, you know, spun bearing, broken ring land. Um, as long as the case is physically in good shape, cylinder walls aren't all beat up. Um, we usually torque the case together, put bearings in it. Uh, we check the main line, make sure it's straight. If it's straight or at least correctable, um, what we will do next is we will clean the block up real good, um, get all the oil off of it, and we will start our oil porting process. Um, now, we have quite a bit of different options for the oil porting process on these blocks because it depends on what crank we use, what kind of power it's going to make, what kind of RPM it's going to see. Um, there's a lot of different things. There's some standards. So our standard for one of our first standards is the inlet part of the pump uh, where the pickup tube goes that gets here i'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this up on end so you can actually see in it so we port this out to fit the ig and killer b pickup tubes without any reduction no reduction in there whatsoever perfectly smooth nice smooth for smooth radius we have found that this is very 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 important on these so that is the inlet part of the pump. Um, then the pressurized side, um, we radius all this. We, it's hard to see in there, but we radius every 90 degree turn in the oil system on these blocks. Um, on this case half, we do the oil filter housing. So the oil comes in through the pickup tube and through the pump, out of the pump, through this hole, takes a 90. This just dead heads right here. Um, the oil goes through this gallet right here, comes through here, forces itself through the filter media, through the filter media up through this hole. There's a 90 in here. We port and um, we do change the shape and the size of that in, inside of there. It's kind of hard to see, um, but that 90 degree in there, we radius that. Um, and that actually comes through here. Dead heads here, but it also goes straight up through this main galley. Um, this gets ported in both directions so this 90 and this 90 because this is what feeds this case um, in here there is a huge step and there's always casting flash in there we we clean that up real good all the it's so hard to get it to focus but um, all the 90s we radius all the 90s in there on the mains we clean up all the casting flash all the way through there um, so we do all of that on this block prior to even sending it to the machine shop. The machine shop that we utilize is Cylinder Support Systems. Um, they do all of our closed decking. We partnered with them to do literally everything we need for a super short block. Um, all of our closed decking, bore and hone, mainline correction, half inch head stud mods, pin mains, all that stuff. Anything from an OEM rebuild that needs machine work to a thousand horsepower drag engine, we utilize them. Part of the reason we partnered with them is for one, their closed deck system, we believe is the best. Um, as you can see, it is one billet piece. There's no breaks in it anywhere like some of the other companies. Not that other companies make them bad, it's just we believe that the single piece insert is the strongest. It does not lift, it doesn't create any, you know, any weird gaps. You don't get corrosion and vibration in between the pieces. Um, and it's very, very strong. Um, a lot of people say, oh, well, the coolant's not gonna flow through here. Um, the biggest thing is coolant doesn't really flow that fast. Um, coolant actually moving kind of slow is good because it can absorb heat better when it's not moving as fast. You can't have coolant flow too fast. Now, I'm not saying that we've slowed the coolant down, it's just if you look at a head gasket, these holes will flow plenty of volume. We've never had heating issue on, you know, road course cars, literally anything. They work perfectly fine. So, um, so this block specifically, we utilize the Manly Platinum Series piston. We utilize Manly, Manly parts in all of our engines. Um, 
on our stage three, our stage two and stage three, we use their HTUF rods. Um, on our stage three, we do calico coated rod bearings. Um, it is the dry film lubricant, which is very, very good uh, for cold starts. It's good for detonation. Any any time you have like a, an oil starvation issue, this can save your motor. This is very, very crucial. Um, our stage two and stage three, um, even our stage one utilizes the salt bath nitride 79 mil stroke uh, crank. Um, there's a really, really good hard surface finish on these crankshafts. Um, we buy them directly from Subaru of America. They have really good machining. All of our crankshafts get vetted. Um, they're very well balanced from the factory, um, but we check them for bend. We blueprint all of our cranks. Um, we have obviously lots of them. Um, we check every one of them. Um, there's not a single part that goes in the engine that doesn't get completely vetted by us. Um, so once we set the rod bearing clearances with our plethora of bearings that we keep, we get the exact clearance we want. Um, we keep these in a pile. We verify piston to wall clearance. Um, CSS does an amazing job. We have never had any problem with their machine work. It is very, very spot on. Um, they torque everything together like we do when we do final assembly, so everything's very consistent. Um, when we set the main line after we get it back, you know, we have to use multiple different sets of oversized, extra oil clearance, standard bearings. We get our, we set our clearances that we have found are best for these engines. Um, before we take the bearings out, after we set the, the clearances with the case, um, we, we ultrasonic clean the crankshaft, we keep the bearings in it, we lube up the bearings, and we put the crankshaft in the block and we torque it together without rods. We do a final spin test because I want to feel, I want to feel it and know that it's actually spinning good. We make sure that the bearings aren't scuffing or anything like that. You know, I will spin it a lot to make sure that everything is just, you know, working well together. Um, as long as that feels good, I will, sorry, it's a little bit of a mess here. I'll put this contraption on the end of the crank here. I usually screw it into this hole. I put it on the end of the crank and I will check thrust. Um, make sure thrust is good. As long as thrust is good, we disassemble it all. Wipe all the bearings off. I inspect them for any scuffing, anything like that. You can see my blueprint marks. Um, as long as everything looks good, we number them. We ultra, ultrasonic clean the bearings. Um, the crank will get ultrasonic cleaned one more time to get all the grease and any dust that's collected on it. Um, it'll get ultrasonic cleaned again. And then the case um, will get wiped down again. Um, and we will do our final detail on the case to clean it up real good. Um, we'll clean all the last little bits of RTV out and everything that's, you know, just left over from, you know, just getting into the machine shop quickly. Once the case is cleaned, um, we will deep deburr anything that is on the deck surface here will deburr everything um, and then we run brushes through all all the oil ports and we'll ultra ultrasonic clean the case itself from the ultrasonic cleaner it gets power washed with about 1500 psi through all of the holes inside outside all up in the closed decking um, and then we wipe down the cylinder walls with uh, break-in oil um, once the case is completely dry it comes back in here into our clean room and we do final assembly. Um, so we torque the rods on the crank. We have a little fixture down here that we've made to do that uh, properly. We can check rod bolt stretch and we put it all together. So that is essentially our stage three. A lot of our blocks have a lot of similarities. So the only difference between our stage two and our stage three is just closed decking and the coated rod bearings. Um, now we do have an option for our stage two to utilize the coated rod bearings, and that is our track series stage two. Um, it's not that it's not needed. You can option to have it if you want, it, but we don't find that it is extremely necessary on stage two. Um, stage two, you're gonna run into issues with the cylinder walls before you run into issues with the rod bearings. So um, yeah, that's what we do. Hopefully this answers some questions that people have about our stage three. And if y'all got any questions, Feel free to get all of us.